Cross Trail. It's a 47 kilometre route, uh, it's about 1600 metres of climb, and goes from Sheffield to Hayfield, or the other way around, whichever way you want to run it. But it, it links the two places, and there's an ancient bridleway that ran between those two points. Um, that was listed in the 1270 chart, Furnival Charter, and describes the stopping points along the route um, as Edale, Derwent, Hordenstones, Moscar, and Stannington. So we followed that route, found the sort of pack horse bridges and guideposts along the route. And with a lot of research and a lot of time running to various parts of it and, and finding the actual old paths along the route, and we've managed to recreate a, an old an old pack horse trail. Hopefully have. The peak pack horse period was the 1650s to 1800s, um, and it tailed off as cheaper forms of transport came along, like the railways and canals. But until that point, it was really the best way to move heavy goods across the hills. Uh, the main sort of products are things like salt, iron ore, and tools, and the and wool. And for obvious reasons, I chose to use a bale of wool to carry. Um, I didn't fancy carrying 20 kilos of iron ore on the back, um, but it made it uh, it made it easier to sort of connect and think about what what I was actually recreating uh, by carrying a bale of wool across the across the tunnel. Uh, I got a few I got a few funny looks and the odd sort of cheer as I came along. I think somebody had heard what I was doing, but uh, most people were just interested in, in why I was travelling through there with such a bale of wool on your back, why you're there and where you're going. So I've been running and walking through this landscape through the Peak Districts all my life um, and that's, I've never really noticed or understood why the paths were where they were and why the settlements and the key places were where they were until I looked into this historic connections. Um, you think of Edale, it's at the top of a valley, at the head of a valley that leads nowhere, but it's it's quite large and it's only that large because there's constant flow of traffic, trade, people, and that's, that's created some of the communities that we've got. Derwent would have been similar, I and mean, even bigger, but that's obviously that's gone after it's been laid about. I think it's important for us not to lose or forget this history of why these places are where they are, the paths created them. And I think we need to reconnect with that in some places. It's very easy to lose that and for them to be uh, taken over by farmer development. Just modern life stepping in the way. And keeping these footpaths and links and exploring these places is an important part of, it, of who we are and, and the country we have. Uh, good, slightly anticipation. I might be saying nervous because it's, uh, it's a fairly long way. Keep extending the route. The weather isn't great. No, it's a bit colder than we. Yeah, it is. It's drizzling already, but it's not meant to rain till midday. <laughs> like a good thing. This is the Pack Horse Trail. It's the Pack Horse. The uh, Hayfield first mentioned is this pub was first mentioned in 1577. Um, it's been used as sort of a meeting place to trade animals, exchange animals uh, for, for centuries. The, the route from here over to Sheffield is quite it's quite well defined, there's crosses along the way. Um, the first point is heading up here to Eden. Um, we're going to go up over the top just to the bottom of Kinderlow. Next up, hopefully, is Edale in an hour and ten minutes. That's digging into me. My stomach, marvellous. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
stay safe. Yeah. I've got my phone if you need me. Here we can see Bowden Bridge, which is circa sort of 18th century, but doesn't appear to be in the right place because there's no obvious path from there over Edale, unless there used to be a bridge further downstream, uh, further upstream. Possible it was moved when the industrial works started in the valley. So instead of crossing Bowden Bridge and going up the path up the side, I'm going to stick on Edale Road, follow it up, there's a couple more bridges uh, up to Coldwell Clough. in the background in the mist, Coldor Clough bends around and up behind this line of fields up onto the tops. It's an obvious place to go, it's an obvious route to take. This is Coldor Clough Farm. This is the site of a, a medieval cross, one of the first ones on the route. Um, it's no longer here anymore, it seems to disappear sometime uh, in the 20th century and unfortunately gone without trace but this is a site of Coswell Clough Guide Post or Market Stone. The Market Stone here kind of signifies the start of the climb up onto the onto the hills um, making sure that you take the right route of course that shouldn't have been a problem for anyone experienced you never know. I'm not stopping for this one. This is a climb up from Coldwell Clough. It's long, it's steep. But you know, there's nothing to complain about. It's lovely, beautiful and quiet. That's Kinder Low, just on the edge of the route. Kinderlow is a Bronze Age burial site um, from early Bronze Age, I think, so three and a half thousand years old on the top of that. And in the mist, you can see why that held some sort of sacred and spiritual sort of centre for people here. That's fantastic. Here we are, first medieval cross on the route, Edale Cross. Uh, this is dating from around, I think, 900 to 1500. I think this one is thought to be from the 12th century. It's certainly quite an impressive thing. You know, this far, this far out, up on the hills, this would have been quite a feat to get this all the way up here. And it stood for hundreds of years, if not a thousand years. Yeah, bottom of Jacob's Ladder, here's the Pack Horse Bridge. You can see they're very low arches over mountain streams. And they're also very narrow, with pretty low sides. I imagine this has been built up slightly, but not much. And that's to allow pack horses to cross with their packs either side. And that's Jacob's Ladder up there. Jacob's Ladder is named after a, uh, a man from the 1800s who decided to build the steps so it's reputed anyway he lived on a farm off to the left and built the steps to make it easier 
for people to get up while the horses went round the long way up the zigzag. Now on the Penang Way from Upper Booth to Edale, there's a little bit of a climb up the side of the hill and then drop back down to Edale. But the sun's starting to come out, clouds are breaking up. It might turn out to be a better day than I thought. Hey, it was a bit tough going up Colville Clough. I've not been up there for a while. Just the Nags Head, uh, the old Nags Head, and it's it's an obvious stopping point on the route um, for travellers. But the booths, including Edale, there's Upper Booth, Nether Booth, they were all part of, they were sort of seasonal places for um, people with livestock to graze during the summer, and then they would retreat back down the valley in the winter. Um, and then eventually, obviously, they became um, more settled but this is an obvious stopping point and there's a beautiful bridge, Gibraltar Bridge, just down there. A bit of rubbish. Put that in the bin. Oh, can't get rid of that. Kids will want that card. <laughs> right. That's quite a big climb for out of Jagger's Clough. Um, oh, yeah, maybe it might have been pushing too hard on there. Hopefully, you won't regret that. So, I've made it to Hope Cross, the second of our big sort of crosses on the route. Uh, from here, you could look all the way up Edale Valley, and uh, you've got the ridge up to Mamtor. And possibly uh, the possible old Rome, uh, Roman road, which is called Doctor's Gate. Though some people think the Doctor's Gate uh, comes from a, um, a doctor from Glossop, given the parish of Woodlands Valley, Bamford, Hathersage. And so to make his passage easier, had this road built, um, or parts of this road built. So it's, it's an unknown, basically, as to, as to what was the original um, original reason for this, uh, this track that crosses our bridal way.
was good, but tiring. It's hard to feel it a bit now. Um, got me on 13 miles, so pretty much halfway. Because this path leads straight down, and we've got the site of some Durham village underneath Lady Barrow. Um, at Derwent Village there was a large bridge to cross and that, that was taken down when Lady Bower was eventually built in the 30s uh, and it was stored for 20 years um, and it was only in I think 53 I think that the whole group of various people got together with the waterboard and put the bridge back at Slippery Stones at the top of Howden, at Howden Reservoir. So you can still see that bridge, and that bridge used to be in Doon, and you can see why it was the main crossing point. It was a big bridge, and it's clearly quite a big river, but that was the best way to cross. You can see down at the base of the valley coming across. I'll show you that from the other side. On. He's been nicked so We've got sandwiches. I'm tempted to put my yellow jacket in. I've got my coat in my bag this time, which is interesting. Because this only goes on if it's actually raining. It's just going to keep me warm. One of the changes I made to the route as it goes up to that little barn you see amongst the trees. Oh yeah. I'm going up there now. So we're looking across the site of where Derwent village used to be. Towards the car park where I've just uh, just met Callum and Ross to get some to get some food and water. Top of the cliff, Grindle Cliff, and we're going to go off up this path and round by the wall all the way across to Winston Lee Tor. There is another possible route which I found, but the access isn't quite so certain about whether you can use that. And that follows that ridge line there down the hill into the uh, into the woods. Well, zigzags down the hill and then into the woods. Um, this route we're on is, is a nice bridal way, so it's all good. It's a stunning view, whichever way you go. What are they? Yo yo bears! Free little info card with everyone. Food champions. Cutthroat Bridge got its name from 1635. A man was found here with the obvious wounds. Um, and he was carried down to Bamford where eventually he died from his wounds, unable to tell anyone what had happened. Um, it's assumed he was robbed by bandits and, and left for dead. So that's why it's Cutthroat Bridge. It used to be higher up and got moved for the construction of Mortimer Road, um, which was done much later, 19th century. Well, this is a Hordron, the Seven Stones of Hordron, a uh, stone circle. 
which is Bronze Age. Uh, I think it's early Bronze Age, so again, it's three, three and a half thousand years old. Um, they discovered there was more than seven stones when they, uh, I think it was a drought year, and they ended up with a, uh, doing some investigations. This is the fairy stone, the biggest stone in the circle. Um, its outline is said to be similar to Wind Hill in the background. Uh, and a little dish on top where you leave an offering, an offering to the gods, presumably, the spirits. Um, it's just a really atmospheric place. It's, it, it's hard to understand how people made this and used this three and a half thousand years ago. The landscape would have been very different, but this is, this is a long way from the best of times. <laughs> um, yeah, the ancient bridleway that's, list, that's listed in the 1297 charter, the Furnival charter, described that the routes as going from Edale to Derwent, past the Hordran Stone Circle, and to Moscar and, and High Riggs. What is wrong with people? Leaving litter everywhere. Just that, that, no. See you in a bit. See you later. Last climb, well, for a while, up oh, onto Moscow Cross or where the Moscow Cross is, which is a second to last medieval marker and cross. As you can see, clear cloud and the weather has come in, and it's raining on and off, but it's still quite nice. I just got that hill's done. They're getting harder with each climb. So, here we are at the, uh, nearly the last or the last fully intact um, guidepost and cross. This is another medieval cross, Moscow cross, that's been converted to a guidepost. Around about the 18th century, um, everyone they all had to erect guideposts, all the local parishes and what have you, to guide people across the uh, across the hills and the bridleways. Uh, and that's presumably when the names got carved in it. We've got Hatherton and Sheffield and uh, just away over there. If it wasn't quite so misty, um, we'd be able to see uh, the Hordrum Stone Circle or the, the hill that it's on. So this is in quite a crucial um, area you can see in a lot of places. Um, that's where I'm going next. This is this is Rod Side, which leads into the Riggs High Road. This with Rod Side is an old term for cleared land or adjacent to cleared land. So this high ground would have been drier and easier to to get passage through. Down the bottom, the Rivlin Valley was apparently just an impenetrable forest. A57 was built in the 1850s. Pack horses still used to use this road because it was free and they didn't have to pay the tolls. This road was as good as anything else. No, I'm not a big fan of tarmac. Um, I'll see how my legs cope, <laughs> but um, I've got to follow the route. Last bit went surprisingly quickly, um, but my legs were cramping all the way in various places, so I'm hoping that um, eases off. Just try and get some, I get some salt in, some water. Yeah, I've just got to try and stay warm. But it's getting colder as this evening draws closer, it's getting colder. We've got a few miles of uh, Roots High Road, and then we'll be in town. Yeah, where it gets a whole lot more interesting. Avoid dodging cars and stuff. The next stop is Stanington Cross. So, about, about halfway along the Riggs High Road. Sheffield's just hoving into view in distance, so sort of suburbs. 
Obviously Sheffield wasn't there to that extent at all. The last medieval cross on the route, Stan Cross, Stannington Cross, a number of names. Just slightly hidden away in this Tony Astor growing here. But I love the fact it's still here, marking its way, showing the way down into Sheffield. It's great. Nearly there. Just coming down to Holland's Bridge now. Packos Trail could split in many ways as it comes down into Sheffield itself. There's Mailing Bridge off to the side. You can go up, out further towards the Don. But this, this is the route I think we would have taken to get across to Sheffield town itself and the main centre of, uh, of the area. Um, it's a very modern bridge now, it's very busy, so I'm going to turn the camera on before I get run over. Just uh, climbing up Walkley Bank from Holland's Bridge. This is the last hill on the route and it's, it's steep. I'm not sure they'd have, uh, whether they'd have been zigzags or this part of the route. It's disappeared under years of, years of the city expanding over the top of it. Some of the old routes are still there. Heavy Gate Road will go along in a minute. You can see standing from behind and the route we've taken. Just come down the steps into Crooks Valley Park. This is the site of the old Great Dam, as it was called. Um, obviously now there's a small lake left in the bottom, but this, I would have been on the dam wall where I am now. And this was believed, along with a couple of other dams, to provide all the water Sheffield would ever need in around the mid 1800s. As we get further in Sheffield, uh, more and more of it's changed. I'm now going to cut through the University of Sheffield, um, past the Arts Tower, because the main road, Porter Street, I think it's called, wasn't there. Um, like in the on the 1850s maps, it was just not, not basically not a route. There was a road across here. I think I can't remember what it was called, but this road across here was the main link onto Broad Lane which was, and has been for a long time, the main road into Sheffield from this, this uh, western side. Done. Done it. 29 Across miles. Trail. Seven He's hours. Complete. And delivering a bag of wool. Yeah. Just survive. Oh, and it still smells good. It smells <laughs> as fresh as it did when I, when I sheared the sheep. <laughs> yeah. Sheffield Centre was just over there. Sheffield Castle was supposed to be just down there, though there's no remains of it anywhere because it was destroyed in the, after the Civil War. 
but yeah, this, this would have been a, a key area. Feels good to have finished. Um, it's been a long day. It's a long, it's a long route. Um, perhaps longer than I appreciated when I first started looking into this. And yeah, I think now that I've now that I've run along it, you can see it is quite a faithful route to the old to the old Packhorse Trail. There's various alternatives, I think, to, to some bits of it. Um, but that's um, yeah the best we can with the route we've got and what's left today so the, um, the bit in Sheffield is, is quite hidden behind sort of what's changed over the years but you can still make out the route it's taken there are still the busy paths so in their particular sections because now we go out and do smaller stuff no one runs across the Pennines anymore I mean not not, not normally anyway <laughs> so but yeah, this, in each section, there's, they're very busy, popular routes, and the guideposts are still in crucial places where people um, essentially need a focal point to change direction onto another path, another route. They're all still relevant. Yeah. People should should do it. Maybe, maybe not all in one go. I mean, you shouldn't feel like you have to do it in one go to enjoy it. Um, but it is a good length to do in, in one day. Um, just, yeah. Get the train out there and take your time going back. Whoa! <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> That's not going in. <laughs> My brother Chris Goddard has made a map of the route. Um, he's done quite a lot of mapping of, of routes and, and books on map work. So um, he's produced this lovely map. You can download that. There's a, a link in the description of the video, I think. And yeah, so you can follow about each section of it or the whole thing find the various features along the way. This is that bin bag I found in there, stuffed in a bit of bracken on hoardrum stones. I'm going to use it to wrap my uh, fleece in. Oh thanks Colin, that's awesome. And it's got, a, it's got a nice ram's head on it. It's missing his fleece but that's in the car. <laughs> thanks. Cheers. <laughs> Thanks. That's uh, one heck of a run. <laughs>